Hi, today's topic is uh, IUGR in pregnancy. I suppose it's Greek to the general mass because nobody understands what is IUGR. In our science, we call it intrauterine growth restriction. But to be more practical, it means the small for day baby, that is, the baby not growing to its potential. Now, one of the main reasons people come to us obstetricians during pregnancy is to monitor their pregnancy. What are we supposed to monitor? We're supposed to monitor the, both the mother and the baby. Now, in respect of the baby, the most important thing we monitor is the baby's growth. Is it growing fine? That's the commonest question we're supposed to answer. There are many reasons now why the baby doesn't grow to its potential. The main being that the baby doesn't have the adequate amount of nutrition which is supposed to have through its placenta exchange. Placenta is the mass through which the mother supplies nutrition, oxygen, and the baby clears its carbon dioxide and other byproducts like urea, etc., through the placenta. Now, this exchange process, when it is compromised, leads to inadequate nutrition, and that can lead to a baby which is not growing to its potential. Now before coming even to the why, why IGR happens and what, what are the things we can do for an IGR baby, it's most important to understand that we at present day do not have any treatment for intrauterine growth restriction. So are we failing? No, we are progressing because now baby is born much earlier than the gestations, that means near, before term, preterm babies are doing quite well where we have a level 3 NIC care. So we are at a better equipped today than 10 years back to deliver such babies in today's world. They are surviving well, doing well, growing to the potential after birth and achieving adequate IQ even 5 years down the line. That's what the studies are saying. Now as a doctor, what we are supposed to do is when we first meet the patient, try to find out whether the patient has some and say risk factors for intrauterine growth restriction like like chronic disorders like even if a mother is already known hypertensive or a diabetic type 2 or a type 1 diabetic or has some lung disorder or has a renal failure that people are more often suffering from people with IGR in pregnancy other than that the habits smoking and alcohol not that it, it, it sticks to the highest rate of society if you, if you go to the villages the daily worker smoke beery. That can lead to IUGR as well. So IUGR as such is a sort of very, very, uh, I would say, uh, direct relation with smoking. So it, enhancing a history of smoking and alcohol in pregnancy is very important. <coughs> Apart from that, like if a person has already delivered a growth star restricted baby in a previous pregnancy, the chances of her doing the same this time is very high or as a family history of so or himself or herself the husband or the mother uh, I mean the either of the partners had been an IGR baby these are always factors for IGR now once we screen them for IGR next what to do the next most important thing to is there to monitor the pregnancy more closely than would ordinarily do with somebody who doesn't have the risk factors of the monitoring part we specifically do an ultrasound at around 16 to 20 weeks which can say whether the blood flow in the uterine arteries that means the blood flow in the womb is okay or something is going wrong and that lets us to plan the next part of the pregnancy now the next part of the pregnancy what we need to do is we need to do growth scans from 28 week onwards at an interval of 2 to 3 weeks not less than that but sometimes four weeks also and it has been seen that if this growth scans are repeated at a regular interval and the group and the baby's weight as estimated by the ultrasound is plotted on a specific graph which is designed for that particular mom which is called a customized growth chart and we monitor that baby then we will come to know that the baby is growing to its potential or not if there is any deviation then the next step comes in is to monitor more closely to find out whether the baby blood flow towards the baby is still adequate or not including the amount of water on the baby what we call the lycra if there is a compromise in the blood flow of the baby then it's a time to tell to the mother counsel her and deliver that baby maybe as early as 27 28 weeks also 
because those baby will fail within the womb but will survive outside the womb with a good neonatal care that is all the reason we want to monitor iugr in pregnancy and one of the last but not the least important factors is nutrition in pregnancy whether the baby the mother has adequate nutrition nutrition doesn't mean that if you are from a high socio economic status or a middle class family that means you have adequate nutrition the appropriate combinations of carbohydrates proteins and fats and essential minerals vitamins including vitamin d which is found to be low in a greater subset of population in southeast asia is very important if we can answer this and give them a planned nutritious diet then the chances of a baby having poor growth is much much less less i think again to end the end the story what we need to be aware of is that there is something called small for gestational age babies and we as doctors need to be very very vigilant about monitoring the pregnancy and the mother also needs to be vigilant about uh, risk factors which are avoidable in pregnancy like smoking and alcohol thank you